Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Tech Sylvania. Amazing event. Lots of great energy, lots of wonderful ideas, lots of spirit. So let's stir it up and keep it going. My name's Simon Gosling, and I'm a creative evangelist at Happy Finish. And you can tweet me on at Cy Gosling or find out more about the company at, at happy underscore finish. And we do uh, virtual reality. Uh, three years ago, when I started at the company, we were 65 people in London uh, retouching adverts. So if you go into Nike Town anywhere in the world, and you see beautiful pictures in Nike Town or in Burberry, they've generally been done by Happy Finish. But as you said, you know, we took a headset, we tried it on, and when we saw that about three years ago, we thought, this is the future, and we started doing VR. And now we're 150 people in Shanghai, Mumbai, London, and Portland, Oregon. And... Uh, you know, three years ago, VR was 0% of our revenue. It's now over 50% of what we do and growing real fast. But of course, you know, I'm going to ask the question today, is VR just a fad? Before I do that, I found this on the internet this morning. This is what I was doing. Uh, this isn't me, <laughs> right? But this is what I was doing in the 90s. I remember in the 90s going to the Trocadero and sitting in a massive plastic racing car with a headset the size of a dustbin on my head and driving a virtual reality racing car around a track. But the problem was, when I moved my head, it didn't keep up with where my head was moving. There was latency. And also, the graphics looked like I was in a you know, Money for Nothing Dire Straits video from 1985. So even though, it was really, even though I came out of it going, whoa, this is really cool, let's just quit that, and thinking this is the future, I remember thinking, I wonder if that future is going to happen in my lifetime. Um, and sure enough, it's here and now as far as I'm concerned. The other thing... Uh, let's actually, let's just think. I was reading a magazine, it's everywhere VR right now. Reading a magazine the other day on the tube that they gave to me, and it said, uh, will VR headsets end up in the same graveyard as VHS tapes and 3D specs? Well, that's this question. Is it just a fad? Let's have a look. So we started working with it in June 2013. This is a history lesson which most of you probably know, but let's just have a look at it, all right? So in chronological order, this is July 2014, the announcement of the news that Facebook have bought Oculus Rift for $2 billion. And when Mark Zuckerberg was asked, why have you bought virtual reality? You're a social media guy. He said, it's the next most important computing platform. We're going to have a look at that a bit. I've got a clicker. I don't need to keep going back there. So used to using my desk like that. So um, he bought Oculus Rift, right? And Oculus Rift was a company set up by a 19-year-old guy called Palmer Lucky, in his parents' garage, and he had a dream. You've always got to have a dream. And his dream was to create the best virtual reality headset man has ever seen. And he did so. He got 2.3 million pounds worth of Kickstarter money. We got the, kickst we got the uh, headset. Zuckerberg saw it and said, this is so cool, I'm going to buy it. And he bought it for 2 billion. And if I was 22, when I sold my company for 2 billion, I'd be on the front cover of Time magazine with no shoes on, dancing on the sand. I don't know about you. And you know it's big news, because if you Google Palmer Lucky, you get that. I particularly like um, Vladimir Putin on a horse with Palmer Lucky. I think that's pretty cool. And um, so Oculus Rift was bought, and they started doing great deals. They did a deal with Samsung where the technology of Oculus Rift, which doesn't have latency when you move your head, like back in the 90s, and has nice high-definition images, those were the two obstacles, two major obstacles that Oculus Rift got over. And so this was what brought virtual reality to the now. Oculus Rift did a deal with Samsung Gear VR, a year ago, a Gear VR was about 300 pounds. At Christmas, it was $99. Now, they give them away free when you order a Samsung 7. So Samsung and Oculus and Facebook really pushing virtual reality. But let's look at Google. May 2014, and Google come up with Google Cardboard. What I love about this slide is it says that in the 20% innovation time off, two guys, David and Damien, I love that, 20% time off. Put, turn your phones off, put your laptops down, sit and look at the, the horizon, sit on a cliff and look at, the, look at the world and think and go, what are we going to do? I think my best thoughts come about when I'm not looking at a device. I cycle everywhere and things just pop into my head while I cycle. Unplug and you'll come up with an idea of a cardboard box with two plastic lenses in it. It's brilliant. And, but the thing is, when the world saw it, if you look at any tech blog, they all said, this is a joke, right? And then they looked at it properly, and if you read the bottom line, they all said, but I was wrong. And you're too right, you're wrong. Because 18 short months later, 
there's 5 million cardboard headsets in the world. 1.5 million of those were given away by the New York Times. We recently, with Happy Finish and Tata Motors, gave 2.3 million headsets away. So that figure, which was January, is prob probably way up to about 10 million now, okay? It's a profound way of um, discovering stuff. I mean, I just talked about the New York Times and uh, watching the news in VR. One day, after the horrendous events in Paris, uh, I was in my bedroom at home. I was looking at the BBC website, and it said, stand outside the Bataclan Club uh, in VR. So I clicked, so I picked up my phone, put it in my Google Cardboard headset, and I lifted it up, and suddenly, I was standing outside the Bataclan as people lay their wreaths down on the ground. Now, you don't need VR to be, have empathy. This is a tragic event where human, you feel it automatically. But I will say that the news in VR, I looked down, I thought, how am I here? And there was a guy in a black suit with a black tie. And there was a voiceover, very respectfully, talking about what was going on. And I could direct my own film. I could look at this lady laying down her wreath. Or I could look at this guy doing the same thing. And it was profound. It was absolutely profound because I had presence. And presence is the key with VR, okay? Talking of which on a different note, this is one of my favorite things I've ever seen in VR. It's absolutely brilliant. Go on YouTube, look at 360 largest dinosaur, and you will see David Attenborough telling you about a dinosaur. Now, I saw this once two months ago, and I remember everything. I know that 90 liters of blood go through that dinosaur's heart with every pump. I know its heart weighs the same as three David Attenboroughs. It's about three, five stories high, it's three buses long. I remember it all, and I wasn't very good at school. And I thought to myself, why can I remember everything much later on when I've seen it in VR than if I watched it as a 2D film? So I Googled it. And in 2008, Stanford University did a study called Presence and Memory. And it showed that technology which induces presence increases our ability to recall. Now I work in advertising. And brands want people to remember their brands. No wonder they're queuing up to use virtual reality to tell their stories. Or should I say, share their stories. We don't call these films. We call them experiences. Memories that you have in VR are like memories from real life. I was in solitary confinement, thanks to VR, recently. And when I think about it, I still feel shivers. Not like I would do if I was just watching it as a 2D film. YouTube went 360 in July last year. And just a couple of weeks ago, iOS is also compatible with YouTube. A Coca-Cola advert very, very early on, which was in 360, got 36% more clicks than a 2D version of the ad. Facebook went 360 in September. More about Facebook in a minute. Here we go. Mark Zuckerberg wants to capture his daughter's first steps in virtual reality. Let's look closer at this. So he says, when I took my first steps, my parents wrote about it in a book with a pen. What are you, Victorian Zuckerberg? Give us a break. But anyway, he says, when my cousin's child took her first steps, she took a picture of a camera. When my older sister's son took his first steps, it was a video on a smartphone. But what does he want to do? He wants to capture it in 360 VR, and if possible, he wants to be able to transmit it live to, his grand to the grandparents of the child, giving them presence at a really important moment in their family history. Very beautiful. It's the king of social media really showing why virtual reality will take his platform to the next level. Goldman Sachs say that VR is going to be bigger than TV in 10 years. There's figures up there which are hardware. So it's TV sets versus headsets. Headsets are going to be $110 billion. TV sets are going to be $99 billion. Spielberg is making a movie in VR. Hollywood have sat up and really started embracing VR. I think it's really cool you know, to do, if you've got a favorite film coming out, like a Star Wars film, Engage with it behind the scenes in VR. Let take, take your fans on set. Show them what's going on. Give them presence in the making of your film. Not necessarily making a 1.5, one and a half hour feature film in VR, although that may happen. But right now it seems that some of the best experiences are short experiences which you can just enjoy. Who had one of those when they were a kid? A Viewmaster. Hands up. Come on, I'm not the oldest person in this audience. I spent my summers looking into a Viewmaster like that. I love those uh, things. And now, VR is in kids' bedrooms because they're putting their phones, mum, dad's phones in and looking at VR in a Viewmaster. And it's in their classrooms. Google do this thing called Google Expeditions, taking kids on school trips 
the school bus cannot go. Watch this. Hope he's got okay. audio. Anywhere in the world that you want to go, where would you want to go? I would like to go to the moon. Thailand. Ancient Greece. India. To Nigeria, my homeland. One or maybe all of the seven wonders of the world. When you explore different places, you have the chance to actually learn something new. You want to be able to show the kids that there's something outside of your community that you could go to and learn from and that there's other places you can visit. All right, so let's do our objective and we'll talk about the lesson for today. We're going to take a field trip to Verona, Italy to see the place where Romeo and Juliet lived. I'm going to take you on this field trip under the water. Okay, you guys ready? Pick up your devices and look in your cardboard. What is that? Oh, I see a shark. Whoa! Whoa! It allowed us to go somewhere we wouldn't normally be able to go. Are we in China? This is the Great Wall of China. We got to see the place itself so we could actually understand what she was talking about. How long would it take to walk the length of the Great Wall of China? So much more enriching than just showing them a picture or just having them read about it. This device can actually make us go to places that we've never been before. It brings the lesson to you. You have to see it for yourself to believe it. There's so much other places to see, so you know that it's never going to end. I love that film. I've watched it so many times, but I still enjoy it. You know, I've worked in advertising for 25 years, and David Ogilvy, the founder of uh, Ogilvy Advertising, said, uh, please don't tell my parents I work in advertising. They think I play the piano in a whorehouse. Um, I, I don't have too much issue with the fact that I work in advertising. I love it, and so I'm going to show you some stuff that my company has done with VR, but actually, we're doing stuff that's totally not advertising anymore. We've just done a migraine empathy, a migraine simulator where you get an understanding of what it feels like to have a migraine. We're doing so much different stuff, not just advertising right now, but let's look at some ads. Uh, the first, I'm going to show you some projects now that my company Happy Finish has done. Uh, we bought 360 cameras three years ago. We've got 3D artists. We just started making stuff. And when we went to people and said, look, we can do VR, they didn't care less. Although they liked it, but they said, who can see this? How are they going to watch it? Well, YouTube's kind of helped sort that out. Um, but when we did the first Google Cardboard experience for Ted Baker in September uh, 2014, and when Zuckerberg bought Oculus Rift, suddenly the phone was off the hook. And we're now creating South Park in 360. You can kill Kenny in 360 now, ladies and gentlemen. It's, I'll tell you what, it's hilarious. It's so good. We're doing t so much different stuff. But let's have a look at what we did for Subway. Check this out. Hey guys, how you doing? We're gonna take you for a New York experience. Come on. This is so exciting. <laughs> wow, look Whoa. at the big tall buildings. Oh hey, wow, this is cool. It really feels like you're in New York. Whoa. It was awesome. Felt like we were really there. So that's an experience we created from McCann Erickson. We went to New York for four days. We did two days recce, putting seven GoPro cameras on the roof of a yellow taxi. Two days recce, because you're not allowed to show KFC or McDonald's because it's Subway. You're also not allowed to show the Empire State Building or the Statue of Liberty or famous landmarks because you need a license to show them. So two days, you work out a route, you check it all out. Then two days shooting, we edited it together. People went in the cab, they loved it. You see New York, you hear New York. It had binaural audio, so the sound comes from all the right directions. You taste New York, you feel New York, but you're in London. Good fun. And anyone who watched it in the cab was given a cardboard headset and they could go and watch it at home on YouTube. Next project, Rihanna Antidori. I love this because when we first started doing 360, everyone's like, oh, we're on a roller coaster, woohoo! And then you get bored. The novelty wears off quickly. And what we're finding now is the best projects we're currently we're working on, the ones we're doing currently, I can't wait to share them with you because they've got more intelligent storytelling in them. This is kind of an example of that. It's not VR, it's 360. Why is it not VR? Because you don't need a headset to look at it. But let's take a closer look. Um, the Agency 72 and Sunny uh, did this project. It's called Anti Diary. It's for Rihanna to launch her eighth studio album, Anti, which is number one in the charts right now. And it started with a tweet on November the 23rd. 
this weird anti-diary Unlock the Mystery tweet was released, and there was this nice film. Starts very gently, she's in bed, and it's all lovely, and there's children smiling. Then suddenly there's a creepy corridor, and a kid with a crown, and a key on the floor, and it's all very Stanley Kubrick shining. I love it. And when people went to antidiary.com, they saw this. So that's what they saw on antidiary.com, followed by, this is not a desktop experience, this is a mobile experience only. More of that in a second. But as soon as that came out, 9.34 in the morning, the same day as the tweet, Elle, Vogue, all the big fashion magazines, all the people that Rihanna would want to be associated with are saying, what is this cool, creepy anti-diary project? So you go to your mobile, you check out what's going on. There are eight rooms, seven of which are, uh, are locked, one is unlocked. And um, over a two-month period, they all became unlocked. And as you unlocked each room, various things happened. The first thing you saw was a small bit of dialogue about the story. The next thing you saw was a short film made by Ben Hibben. Then from the film, you would go into these 360 cinemagraphs, which you didn't wear a headset, but you had to move your phone around as if you were taking a panoramic photograph. And you could explore the rooms. And inside the rooms, there were various little bits of treasure. It's a really nice interactive experience. So here's some of the rooms. There's bedroom, there's the closet, the office. And when you come across a little item that's moving, you get a, a wheel, and it will launch filmic content, or it will launch stills content. It's like little hidden Easter eggs in a treasure hunt within these rooms. Let's have a look at the rooms. You'd never normally see them this way. These are just unfolded so that you can enjoy them. You'd normally explore them with your phones. But one of the things I really like about this as well, from a, I've always been a film, in filmmaking, is the creative aspect of this, is this. These, are, these look beautiful. They're shot by a photographer called Jim Fiscus, a really cool fashion and portraits photographer. And if you say to Jim, we want you to shoot these on a 360 camera, he's like, if you want the Jim look, you've got to use the Jim camera. And the Jim camera is a Sony SLR. So using a stills camera with just one lens, bolt down the tripod. We went to New York. We went to these beautiful sets. Click, 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 click. 18 photographs in a sphere. Retouched them, stitched them together, and we at Happy Finish then gave the stitched together 360 cinemagraphs to RGA, who dropped these into the mobile application. And all of them, like I say, you search around them and you trigger new content. It's a really cool project, done in conjunction with Punch Drunk, the street theater company that did Sleep No More. It's a really experimental, cool campaign. Punch Drunk went around uh, uh, New York uh, and Miami, drawing the stick girl from the campaign on lampposts. There's a Twitter handle, which is I am the key holder. That's got 60,000 followers. The films aligned with the project have got over 4 million views on YouTube. It's just a really clever, give the audience, give the fans a little bit at a time, seven, eight, eight rooms. You know, people are saying, when's the next room coming out? I can't wait for this story to unfold. Just a really clever use of 360. So from the world's most famous pop star to possibly the world's most famous footballer, everyone's getting involved, and we're about to do a project with the world's most famous supermodel. I'm not going to allow to say who that is, but you can guess for yourselves. And the, uh, Lionel Messi is the new brand ambassador for Tata Motors. They were launching a car. They were going to call it the Zika, but the Zika virus came out, so they had to change the name to the Tiago. These things happen. And uh, this is what we did. They wanted a VR experience for their stand at the Auto Expo in Delhi in February this year. I've got one minute, 17 seconds. Oh, my God. All right, so they had a stand. The stand was packed. VR gets PR. If you put VR on a stand, people start tweeting about it. The queues are really long, so popular. All the other stands around us with arms folded like, oh, you bastards, <laughs> you've taken our audience. And I think they'll all be doing VR next year. So really great fun. What did they see? They went, well, first of all, actually, the stand was so popular, it got best pavilion at the event. So Tata Motors, who we worked directly with, were really happy. Um, people then saw a VR experience, which was India's first VR test drive. And this was made by Happy Finish India, where we have 50 staff working on this sort of stuff. They created the app. Once you're in the app, you're asked, do you want to watch it in a headset, or do you want to watch it standard? You make your choice, and then you go on a film, which starts at a football stadium with Lionel Messi. You see an exterior, fil um, exterior film of the car with features, an interior film of the car, really immersive, really good fun. And at the end of it, you have three calls to action. Do you want to watch it again? Do you want to book a test drive? Or do you want to buy the car? 
So the ROI on this project is totally measurable. Tata, whenever they try to do something, they always try to get about five to six times ROI on everything they do. This has been a huge success. It was really popular at the car show, so popular that they decided to take the front cover of the Times of India newspaper in India, which is the biggest English language newspaper in India, and they gave away three, uh, 2.3 million headsets to the uh, Indian public, and it's got over 250,000 views on YouTube. It's been a real success, so successful they've said, right, let's do another VR ex experience for the next car. So that's a happy client at happy finish. Um, fi finishing now, Confucius said this 2,500 years ago. If you tell me, uh, I may forget. If you uh, show me, I may remember. But if you involve me, I'll understand. And virtual reality involves you in no way possible uh, that we've seen possible before. So I'd like you to thank you for being involved with me in real reality. Uh -huh. And uh, thank you, Techsylvania, for letting me come here. Have a good rest of the event. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, one more question. Yeah, sure. So. While our next speaker is going to get set up, I still have to address one question that I threatened this to you in the bar already. Oh, which one that was I would that? ask you on stage. Do you <laughs> not remember? Uh, hit me with it. Well, there's one thing which has made a lot of technology breakthroughs come true, right? Remember oh. the DVD and so on? Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing that you didn't address with VR. So, do you know what I'm talking about? Pornography. Exactly. <laughs> so, what is your perspective? Is that going to break the, make the breakthrough for VR? Oh, it, it's already doing so. I mean, via, without pornography, we wouldn't have had VHSs, we wouldn't have had HDTV, we wouldn't have had streaming. We would have had VHSs, sorry. Pornography are the first industry to always monetize things. I'm not saying whether I'm for or against it. But I'll tell you what will happen. Excuse my, if you, you've asked the question, but honestly, with mixed reality, people always say, what's the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality? Augmented reality, you use a device to bring digital content in the real world. VR, you wear a headset to leave the real world and see something. Mixed reality, which is like Microsoft HoloLens or Magic Leap, takes you, keeps the real world there because it's transparent, but brings holograms in. And I'm sorry to say it, but what will drive that would be being able to have sex with your favorite porn stars in a hologram in your room. That is coming. <laughs> that's not the only thing that's coming. Anyway, that, that is what we call a happy finish. That's what we call a happy finish, yeah. Okay. <laughs>